Hi, my name is Dr. Carlos Bellotarces. I'm an orthodontist and a professor at the University of Valencia in Spain, Europe, as my two co-authors. I'm happy to present a case report and I hope you find it interesting. A 34-year-old man came into my office and the main complaint was I have a tooth in my palate and I don't like the gap. He did not mention anything about the anterior crossbite and he said it did not concern him at all. Facial photographs showed a well-proportionated face with a slight molar projection, common finding in patients with maxillary hypoplasia. Intraoral photographs showed a bilateral crush tree malocclusion with a complete anterior crossbite. The maxillary right canine was palatally impacted. Functional analysis observed that in centric relation, the patient reduced the anterior crossbite uh, reaching incisal edge to edge contact. Cephalometric analysis identified a class 3 malocclusion with a mesofacial pattern. We can see how the maxillary and the mandibular incisors were retroclined. A panoramic radiograph showed an impacted maxillary right canine and the absence of the second premolar. Both left third molars were impacted. How would you treat this case? This case has three important key points. Number one, skeletal class 3 malocclusion, number two, anterior crossbite with functional component, and number three, a palatally impacted maxillary right canine. Regarding the impacted canine correction, exposure surgery was performed and after that temporary cement was placed for avoiding exposure from closing. The canine erupted spontaneously three months later and then a tippage plus brackets were placed in the maxillary arch. After that, direct traction from the arch wire was used, uh, using always very soft forces. Regarding the anterior posterior correction, two mini screws were placed distal to the mandibular second molars, and tubes and buttons were bonded uh, in the buccal and lingual surfaces of the molars. Elastic chains uh, were placed from the mini screws to the molars, and three months later, uh, space between the premolars were observed. Then, uh, tippage plus brackets were placed in the mandibular arch. If we see the pretreatment and post-treatment photographs, we can observe how the uh, patient's malocclusion was uh, treated in a reasonable treatment time. Uh, class 3 elastics were avoided in order to uh, not produce a proclination of the upper incisors. If we see the lower photographs, we can observe a good interregitation. Post-treatment facial photographs showed a very nice smile and a harmonious facial profile. Cephalometric analysis identified significant changes due to the clockwise rotation of the mandible necessary to correct the class 3 malocclusion. The panoramic radiograph showed that adequate root parallelism was obtained. Moreover, we can observe the lower molars abraded due to the distalization of the complete mandibular arch. If we check these, vid these videos, we can observe how we correct the position of the canine uh, with direct traction to the arch and how we open the bite to correct the anterior crossbite with distal traction directly using a skeletal anchorage. Occlusal videos show how we correct the position of the canine using very soft forces and how we open space for the second premolar and how we distalize the lower teeth uh, using elastic, elastic chains directly to the minus screws. Finally, I would like to thank to the AGO DO for granting me this opportunity to present this case. I encourage all of you to read the manuscript. Thank you very much.